Uh, all right, number nine. The watermelon fork is being called one of the world's most genius gadgets. It allows you to slice and eat watermelon with one utensil ah. and no mess. All right. Got a blade on one side so you can slice or dice. And the fork on the other side allows you to eat your cubed fruit. Seems like a few companies out there make a watermelon fork. Oh. But we are here to tell you, you should not be paying more than 10 bucks for a quality watermelon fork. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. That's a good word there, because yeah. you think, ah, oh, this might cost me 50 bucks. Right. Oh, and hey, do this. you need a fork just for a melon? Really, that is a, that's a question only. But it's just the idea that this cuts it up for you. This is right. fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how it drags it through. Yeah. Mm. Look at this. Cubes it right up. Yeah, you wonder if it goes deep enough. Though, that's yeah. the problem. Well, it makes a cube. And yeah. then you go the next lower level down. down. Oh, uh, Boy, look at how how great will be, you know, you like to carve out those watermelons and make it for like baby showers, yeah. and then you have the big fruit basket. Yeah. This would make your life so much yeah, easier right. for you. Mm. Yeah, people That's love nice. carved watermelons in baby showers. Yeah, they yeah, do. Gosh. Really do you still have them. your melon baller? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use it all year round, even when it's not yeah. melon season. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Melon baller. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, uh, here's a public service you didn't ask for. We have three kinds of uh, weird shoes that are really popular online and selling like hotcakes, as they say. All right. Now, these are all under 40 bucks, like these quilted slippers. They're called the Kubua oh, yeah. uh, slippers for men and women. And what people like is that they slide right on, and you can use them like a loafer uh, with the back heel or just as a slip-on without the heel. Also, rubber soles so you don't slip and fall. Mm. So Next, a slipper. Yeah. <laughs> How about pillow slides? Oh, these, yeah, these are, are also old. slippers. Yeah. But if you're the all type right. of person who... They're like the uh, Yeezys, aren't they? Isn't that what... Similar to the like the knockoff of the, uh, I don't know. That's I don't know. My these go well with pajama know. pants, I'm yeah. told. Yeah, they do. Uh, you will probably also wear these to the school drop off. People love that the padding is super thick. And last one, these Oxford platform loafers. Oh, those are a I rounded know. toe, and the sole yeah, gives right. you a little lift. Come in 11 colors. Look yeah. at that. Oh, that we, is wow. very whimsical. Fun. Yeah. See, you get to a certain age, though, you don't know if you can pull off whimsy anymore. You just right. look yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. Your like, fashion options do become yes, limited. Yes, they the are limited. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Just think that one over. Yeah. All right, number seven, uh, Bleisure is having a big moment right now. <laughs> For those of you in the know, it's business leisure. Ooh. Bleisure. Uh, it's a way to combine sporty track pants and more dressy office attire. And I am SHFI, which that was is close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I was worried about that one. So was I. Uh, I think satiny track pants <laughs> with a crisp button down shirt. I'd finish off the look with some low heels or slip on flats mm. and can we talk about the sweater vest please do it's the sporty girl's chic best friend a sweater vest goes from weekend to work day with the quick change of the t-shirt underneath on the weekend keep it casual with the cute cotton tee for work add a little silk top and a blazer to top it off and mm -mm -mm. kaboom there you are yeah mm. vests are having a moment oh yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. yeah. Big time. All right, number six, if you don't know about Korean sweet potatoes, now is the perfect time to learn. They're basically just like the sweet potatoes you're used to, except they're yellow inside, and they're nice and sweet. Mm. And here's the perfect and easy thing for a fall gathering or just a snack at home. You bake these up just like regular sweet potatoes for about yeah. an hour. Yeah. You know what you need to put them on or put on them? Nothing. Really? Mm. While they cook, they will caramelize under that skin and they will taste like they have sugar or sweet sauce right well, on them and the inside nice. will be sweet and soft too. You just slice them into small bites and serve. They're so good, some people have them for dessert. Wow. And for mothers with young kids, babies love them and they're healthy, so if you look in the store, you might they might just be called Japanese sweet potatoes, but they're the same thing. Well, don't say that to the Korean. I know, sweet but they well sometimes they're mislabeled is what they're saying. Yeah. But I guess they must be relatively easy to find. I don't know. There mm. you go. That doesn't seem seems like that should be cleared up. I think so. This.
day and age. Number five, a lot of people remember this guy in 2008, an Iraqi journalist threw not one, but two shoes at President George W. Bush during a news conference. But many forget something a more serious. In 2005, in the country of Georgia, a terrorist threw a live grenade at Bush as he appeared with the Georgian president. Vladimir Aratunian pulled the pin and tossed a grenade. It landed about 100 feet from the president but it didn't explode. It had hit a woman's shoulder after the toss, cushioning wow. its impact, and it was uh, wrapped in a bandana, which softened its landing. The grenade thrower got away, but was caught after two months. He appeared in court with his lips stitched together in what he called a show of solidarity with thousands of inmates conducting a hunger strike in the ex-Soviet Republic. He received a life sentence and will likely never get out of jail. Hmm. All right, number four, this is Ritz Carlton's new luxury floating lot. It's a floating high-end hotel. It begins sailing this week. The Evrima huh. has 149 suites on board with some of the highest end brands you'll ever find. And it'll cost you $4,600 a person for a seven day trip from Spain to France. And all the meals will be created by a chef with three Michelin stars. It will continue cruising across the Mediterranean, Caribbean, Central America, and South America through 2024. Oh, wow. Look at that. Nice. Hmm. All right, uh, number three, according to some relationship scientists, more men are saying no to having kids. Hmm. According to their data, the number of male high school seniors who say they never want kids more than tripled between 2000 and 2019. And it doesn't end there. Older men, all the way up to age 49, are also less inclined to want kids. Their reasons for not wanting children? Let me well, guess. Well, all the obvious ones. <laughs> <laughs> I value my time and my hobbies. I don't want to financially support another person. It's just not appealing. I'm still a child. Uh, or they just don't like kids, which is also probably. Yep. A possibility. You can read more about it in the uh, Journal of Marriage and Family, the old jump. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which is a good one. Yeah. Huh. All right, number two. Here's a real short video of a guy loading veggies onto a truck, and I'm not sure about the physics of this. It probably involves gravity, acceleration, maybe vector force, but this guy's mm. technique is amazing. Okay. What? Yeah. Wow. It's hard to get your head around it. Look at that. What's he throwing in there? I can't tomatoes, tell. Tomatoes, I think. No, those can't be tomatoes. You'd be bruising every one of them. No, sometimes tomatoes. those tomatoes are for uh, How sauce. How does he get it to... It could be potatoes, maybe. If he holds onto the strap until the end and then flicks it back, kind of. That's something. a pro. Uh, that yeah, is like a magic there. trick. Magic. Yeah. I'd be so tired. Look, this just keeps going on and on. Yeah. You wonder why are we paying our athletes millions of dollars yeah. when this yeah. guy has a skill and a talent that is yeah, just yeah. as special. Right. He's still going. Still going. That's amazing. We've been running this video for like a minute now. But look at how the basket just does a left turn every t right? It yeah. Just... See, this this yeah. is a metaphor for the TV landscape in Chicago. All the other guys just sitting there picking their potatoes like yeah. every and there's one station that's doing the magic. Yeah, killing yeah. it. Who's that station? Um look, I think he's it's still us. Still going. But we're not hey, getting someone else would tap out and help them yeah, out no, and take a turn. Two minutes. Yeah. It's not easy. Okay, he's taking a break then. Yeah. Number one, here's a lost scene from the 1984 comedy rockumentary about a fictional metal band. This is Spinal Tap. Michael McKean turned 75 Monday, and he posted that even he hadn't seen it. The scene wasn't in the film, but it was part of the home video release. Here the guys are on a visit to the <laughs> zoo while on tour discussing what uh, apes eat. <laughs> you know, they like to eat. I've heard that mainly these large apes, they're bread eaters mainly. They go for, you know, any kind of bread is and yet it's straight, And yet they've developed, as a race, they've developed no baking skills. N none whatsoever, no. And yet, but they still feed on bread primarily. Not a race, though, they're a genius. 
Well, some of them well, are smarter they're a than culture. others. You can't really... They're a culture they're rather than, yeah. a, than a, well, genus, a genus. They're a know. genus and a subculture. Yeah. yeah. A culture right. as ape. They're not a counterculture. You think no, of the no. baboons as perhaps being a counterculture. Yeah. 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 Smaller, yeah. The smaller monkeys are mainly bread eaters as well. <laughs> really? In the wild, yeah. They Didn't mostly know that. eat bread, different types of well, bread. Well, I knew a monk. I knew Rust. a bloke had a monk that ate soup. They ate onion soup with the cheese on top <laughs> yeah. and the, the crumbly bits. I know, they like soup. But that's yeah. why they're... But they don't, that doesn't make them a soup-eating uh, species, does it? No. That would be why they a nation of... Uh, it's a nation of peaceful sort of citizens, really, the gorilla. Yeah. You know, I've never been to Africa oh. proper, but well, I know that if I was to get in a, some sort of a uh, fight, that I could hold my own, I think, <laughs> with a gorilla. Look at this one looking yeah. at us, look. He's just, it's like he's watching telly, you know? <laughs> I've read about that they can talk. I mean, a few words, you know. Yes, please, <laughs> little things like that, you know. Can I have more bread? Well, they can do that. <laughs> no, they use computers. They can use computers, yeah. yeah. It's like they can't talk, but they can use computers. Well, they can also work. talk. They no, can talk, yeah. but they can't swear. They can use automated no, cash No, they can't swear. Well. It's, it's not in their system. There's a sort of blockage mechanism that keeps yeah. them. It's like the, it's called the anti Tourette syndrome of the ape. Rubbish, one's been known to say, but that's about as severe rubbish. as it gets. That's not very that was, bad. That was, no, a, that was a, a request. Of yeah. Yeah. A load, load of rubbish. rubbish. Well, we love you very much. <laughs> Come to the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Final tip. That's, that's a, a nine at nine. Uh.